what is an orgasm headache and is it dangerous? In today's Sunday case study, I have the presentation of a 31 year old male who comes into the emergency department with the worst headache of his life. He states that he was having sex with his partner and at the peak of his climax, he felt like an ice pick went through the back of his head. His headache persisted and he had two episodes of vomiting. When the headache didn't go away, he came into the emergency department to get checked out. A CT of his brain was performed that showed the following findings. What's the diagnosis and what's the treatment? And why did this happen at the peak of his orgasm? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll explain the whole case. An orgasm headache? So today I'm going to explain the case I presented yesterday of this 31 year old male who had the worst headache of his life upon the peak of his climax when having sex with his partner. He states that it felt like he had an ice pick that went through the back of his head and he had two episodes of vomiting. He came into the emergency department and a CAT scan was done that showed the following. Here's a slice of a CT of his brain showing an extensive amount of bleeding around the brainstem. You can see that the brainstem is this heart shape uh, gray material here and all of this bright white stuff is blood. Here is an example of a normal CT scan where you can see the heart shaped brainstem and what should be black there, which is CSF or spinal fluid. So his diagnosis is a subarachnoid hemorrhage or a bleeding in the brain. How is that related to sex? In most people upon climax, your blood pressure skyrockets, which increases your risk of a hemorrhage in your brain. An increase in your blood pressure will cause increased forces on your blood vessels. And if there is a weak spot, such as an aneurysm, it could bleed. It's the exact same reasoning why certain drugs can cause a bleed in your brain, such as methamphetamine or cocaine. He underwent a cerebral angiogram in which we injected dye into the blood vessels of the brain to make sure that he didn't have an aneurysm, which is shown here. And lucky for him, there was no evidence of an aneurysm. If it did show an aneurysm, then the patient would have underwent a surgery, which could have been a coil, a stent, or a clipping of that aneurysm to prevent it from bleeding again. There are some case studies out there that say three to 15% of people that present with aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage have coitus as the immediate preceding activity. In this patient, since his initial angiography was negative, we would plan to repeat that in a few weeks in order to ensure that there was no underlying vascular malformation. In a patient like this, in which we do not detect an aneurysm that causes a subarachnoid hemorrhage, we would observe them in the hospital for one to two weeks to watch for vasospasm. When you have bleeding around the blood vessels in the brain, it irritates those blood vessels and can cause vasospasm, which is where the blood vessels can actually constrict, and that can actually cause a delayed stroke. In this patient's case, he was observed for 10 days. He did great. He remained neurologically intact throughout his hospital stay and was discharged home without complication. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.